Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today's Sunday, March 22, uh, 2020. How are you? Yeah. Are you wearing a mask when you go out? I should. I'm a little unprepared. I've been quarantined now maybe seven days. I've gone out, but like to bike ride, but I don't think I've run into people. Yeah. I mean, I'm starting to see more and more people wearing masks outside. And not only masks, but even scarves and stuff like this. So I'm wondering if this will become like a new new fashion statement in a way. And I think California and New York, more than the rest of the country, will you'll see masks and you'll see um, gloves. Um, makes sense. I saw some of the VCs that I know. You know, it's always like the early adopters, you know. I wonder if, if we see companies like Nike and Lulu starting to, you know, sell or even just give away masks with their logos, right? It would totally make sense. Totally, totally. So I think you've just done a, a fabulous job. I mean, this is the way you invest as a young man, um, getting out of the market, then short the market. So I'm, I, I have, you know, this is your show today. And then I'll end with some ideas for people that you know, listen to me, but why don't you just walk people what, what you're doing and what you're seeing. All right. Uh, so the S&P is down about 32% since wow. from particularly highs just for the past four weeks. So in about a month. And it, obviously this is a very rare occurrence. If you go back in history, it only happened uh, three or four times. 1929, uh, we have the 1998 it went down that fast in 98? 1998, yes. Uh, I mean, I'll pull up some historical charts uh, for people to see. Uh, but yes, in 1998, it was a big, it went down significantly in two months. And then in, um, in, in 2000, and then now, four times, basically, when uh, the market went down so, so quickly from its 52-week highs. So it's, uh, it, it's kind of unprecedented, or let's say it happens very rarely. Yeah. Um, last week, we saw the S&P testing its uh, December 20, uh, 2018 lows, and it kind of even closed below it. <clears throat> so now we're in uncharted territory. We are. Can I add one thing? The people that are like so confident, you know, those 18 lows were with just the U.S. government shut down, right? Like. Like if you think about why the markets were down in 18 and that sharply is when Trump was making a lot of bad decisions, you know, he was doubling down and tripling down on the government shutdown. And so, um, you know, it's relatively with the world shut down, that 18 low never meant anything to me, right? Like if the market got that low on just the US government shutdown, uh, you know, taking out that number doesn't, isn't like some magical, Thing, right it's you know I think it's, a it's a potential uh, support but yeah. uh, you see it, it's not working really in, in bear markets you know obvious technical support levels don't really work that well uh, those markets can require different catalysts being oversold is not enough you, you, those types of markets require to see uh, government help in a way just outside catalyst uh, just technically oversold is not enough for a bounce and I'm going to talk about some uh, positive divergences in a little bit, but I just want to show people that uh, the, so the, the S&P closed below its uh, 2018 low. And then the next, if we're talking about technical levels, the next potential level of support is around 200. And after that, we're going to 170. Yeah, uh, those are the two levels that I'm going to add, 1700 yeah. and 2100. Yep. Uh, the Nasdaq 100 is definitely holding better. It's, it's even like 20% away from its uh, December uh, 2018 low, and maybe for a good reason, since uh, if in the future more and more people work from home and uh, software is only going to become more important, uh, a more important and a bigger part uh, of the economy. So you've, you've, worked, you've worked from home forever. Uh, yeah, I've worked from home since 2013, but... Uh, I have experience in that and definitely yeah. not, it's not so, easy at the beginning. So, so the lines, so this is the one I'm focused on. I'm not even focused on the S and P anymore. So let's, so the lines Ivan. Yeah. So somewhere between, uh, the lows of 18 and the 2000 bubble, 
Yeah. And, and, and you think, you know, so those are the numbers I'm using to really start accumulating tech. I'm leaving tech alone personally, and we'll go into this at the end until we get to levels that uh, make people just swear off tech stocks. You know, okay. if, you know, so keep going. I'll show you a few historical charts, uh, just for reference, and then uh, at the end, I'm going to talk about a little bit about uh, some positive momentum divergences that I'm seeing right now. I mean, they might not, they might mean mean nothing, or they might mean something. And then I'll let you finish. Uh, so we'll go back first all the way to um, 1929, mm -hmm. right? In uh, 1930, we go to a daily chart, and you can see that there's a very quick drop in two months. Well, obviously, at the time, the market was not as liquid. As you can see, it was trading 3,000 uh, shares uh, per day wow. and stuff. But the market went from 386 to 200, so almost 50%. I didn't realize that was fast. Okay, that's in, cool. In, in three months, so kind of similar thing we're looking at right now. And as you can see, uh, the market got oversold. It bounced. It, it, it found some resistance near its 20-day, uh, then tested the lows, and then it tried to bounce again and every single time. The next year was a great year. I mean, just percentage wise, the following year was a great year. Which one, 31? Uh, yeah, December 30 on was a good, you know, 30% year, 40% year. Yeah, I mean, when the market went down 50% in three months, after that it went up 50% in, yeah. in like three, four months. So definitely, even in the worst of times, right. we see some gigantic uh, relief rallies and really good trading opportunities for nimble traders. Yep. And if we just fast forward to let's say 34, but on a weekly chart, so you see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You can see you know, the, the biggest decline in US history, which is like you know 85%. It's just the beginning, wow. So th that really? big first drop was 50% and then- That's it, Unbelievable, that's cool study every, history. Every rally to the 50 or to the 200. Oh my God. Rally. So it, it was three years of brutality. Exactly. And then people yeah. keep asking, you know, when is, where is the bottom where we should start, you know, blindly buying everything? And from a technical perspective, it's when you see a setup of, that, of a major uh, average above its, uh, above its 50 day and when the 50 day is already above a flattening 200 day. This is when a new bull market can potentially yeah, it took, start. It took, it took almost a year. You didn't have to catch a bottom. You had to wait a year. Exactly. You had to like... If you fast forward to, I don't know, 37, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you can see, you know, if you waited, you didn't have to catch the bottom. You could have waited right. and drop or set up above, above a uh, flat 200 yeah. day moving average. And then from there... Excellent. We, yeah, we've got a lot of healing to do, but there will be a rally. And the question is, is this next rally? There'll be some major really rallies. Yeah, the question yes. is, is the new $2 trillion stimulus that the Congress is supposedly voting for? And it seems they're still fighting on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if, if, if this thing doesn't cause a rally, uh, we're probably uh, dropping very quickly to 200 or even lower. Yeah. Uh, and then fast forward, let's just go to 1998 to just get a little bit more positive or optimistic view on, on corrections. Uh, NASDAQ Composite will go all the way to 1999. And let's look at the daily. Look at that drop from 2000 to uh, 1400. That's a significant um, well, 30 percent 30 something percent uh drop in but that was the long-term yes. capital management thing you know but that's what set up the internet bubble exactly mm -hmm. and uh you know of course the, the markets bounced quickly from there from that after uh, they were bailed out the market bounced quickly near uh, to all-time highs and then fast forwarding to 2000 and 2001 you can see the the Nasdaq uh, composite top here, the the big drop here, the thirty percent drop in like a month, two months, <clears throat> and then it just 
started trending below its 200 day moving average. I think it's the next 30% rally that we, where that comes from is when people are going to have to make a decision of, of, of really when they get out of stocks. Exactly. And I, and I expect may, many of them will. And um, I know many financial advisors like to tell people that, you know, you should never go out. You should always uh, remain 100% invested and keep adding, but I'm not sure most of their models go that much back in time and take into account some very, very rare events like, you know, the, in the early 30s. Yeah. All right, go back to today's, Ivan. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go back to today. That was excellent. Uh, today's March. So the interesting thing that I noticed last, um, last week is that as the indices were making new lows and they finished near their lows for the week, I saw a very big drop in new 52-week lows, like a significant drop. As the indices closed near the lows, uh, the new 52-week lows was dropping significantly. And it's like a, on Friday, it was only 350 stocks uh, finished at new 52-week lows compared to like 2,000 earlier. So we're we definitely starting to see some some divergences, uh, let's say, especially there's some tech stocks that are kind of holding a little bit better. And if the market, obviously, if it wow. continues south, this might end up being a, a short opportunity that's re that rip here. But there are definitely stocks that are holding a lot better. And there were even three new all-time highs on Friday, uh, Zoom, Zoom Tele Teledoc, and, there, and then there was one of, one of the biotech company. Um, so, I mean, the silver lining here is that, yes, we're seeing some positive uh, momentum divergence, which may not be enough for a rally, but it might be, uh, depending on how the market will react on the fiscal stimulus. The, the correlations are kind of starting to, um, to go down because the market understands that this, what is happening right now with the coronavirus is not the end of the world, but it's definitely is gonna mean a big, significant change in the way we live and work and play. And there will be some big winners and there will be some big losers out of that. And like, uh, for example, would you rush back to F45, Ivan? Uh, no, right now I'm taking a break. The, the no, but I'm saying in a month, will you rush back to F45 if they say it's all clear? Uh, probably. Okay. Would you yeah. wear a mask? If I find one, I might wear a mask, yeah. <laughs> So uh, you're, you think I your mean, behavior, you would go, you personally would go right back to like working in groups and uh, working out with groups and sweating in groups type thing? I might. I think so. Yeah, but definitely there'll be some change in behavior. Just, just a few weeks ago, I was, I was looking at people wearing masks outside in a weird manner. I thought, you know, why are they so weird? But then the, the more I read about it, the more I understand that it actually, you know, can help. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Maybe that yeah. it's like a trading edge. Why wouldn't you wear a mask? Like it's stupid. Of course you should wear a mask. Yes. Don't you want to live? Maybe there will be a cultural change uh, yeah. in that uh, manner. Uh -huh. and, well, so I think there is always a bull market somewhere. Even in the in the depths of the biggest bear markets, the money will always go somewhere, and someone, an industry, is always going to benefit. I understand, but it's. It's more like venture capital at this point, which when we're finished, I'll get to the treating stocks as venture capital right now. Um, you have to separate in a 30% to 50% drawdown on the indexes, take some money. If you really feel like you want to invest, then don't go into the indexes, pick some companies, a mix of companies that treat it like venture capital. If it's 10% of your portfolio, treat it now, you're a venture capitalist and there's going to be stocks that go to zero, but you have to you know, allocate your portfolio. So I'm just more interested in as a young person, what you're thinking, how quickly you'll just resume the normal uh, behavior. And F45 and like crowded uh, restaurants are, you know, that's what young people do so, and travel. So I'm just wondering how fast young people go back to that. But even if you want to go back to our old life, I don't think we'll have that chance very quickly because a lot of things will change. I and mean, for example, I think that in, in the future, it will become something normal for an airline to request for you to show that you're 
clean out of all viruses before you get in on the plane. For sure. We're going to lose that freedom for sure. You're going to be keep getting your temperature measured on flights for sure. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be some significant changes uh, coming and we just have to accept them if you want to continue to travel and, and just travel. Gonna have some freedom lost. Yep. Okay. And so what age, so what do you, what, how are you positioned right now? Well, cash, I'm positioning cash, but I'm, I am actively trading throughout the day and definitely uh, nibbling and I'm active because there's some great opportunities uh, during the day, even some- But nothing, nothing urgent that you want to share, any like other, nothing urgent? I mean, obviously right now there, as I said, there's always a bull market somewhere and currently all the, the grocery stores, all the, some of the consumer staples, even though they're, they pulled back after the big drop, uh, they're kind of the new momentum stocks and uh, also- uh, Yeah, but those are too big a range. Those are crazy. Yes, uh, some of the online educational stocks, for example, this one in China, even though, even though it's a small stock, there's, there's stocks that, that, are, that are holding better than the rest. Okay. And um, interestingly, on Friday, with that big drop in the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, we kind of, the VIX also finished red, which is kind of, you know, the... I just think things are broken. So I think people, you know, I just think there's no indicator that works in this kind of crash. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, after we saw last what we saw last week in the treasury markets when uh, big yeah. hedge funds uh, blew up, and we saw that big drop in uh, even in treasuries. Not just a big drop. It's like the moves up and down have been the biggest, like four or five, five days. Worth. It's basically, yeah. the yeah. last place where people can hide right now is what they talk. But also, we're seeing something similar in muni bonds. Big crash in yeah. obviously in junk bonds. Uh, which are back to 20, 2008 levels. So basically the market is pricing in many bankruptcies in that field. With, with crude oil at 2002 level. So crude oil is definitely at almost 20 year lows. But you know, the other day I, I, I filled my tank and I paid like 360, 370 per gallon, which like surprised me. Like how come... I uh, guess it's not under two dollars when uh, yeah. all is down to two thousand and two levels. Yeah. Um, all right. You want me to uh, finish up? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, congrats on like sidestepping this. I think you, you know it's too hard for me, but I think at least we've been pretty cautious, and I kind of stepped aside. And, and uh, I think you've done a good job. I think the going to cash is, is hard for the people in their forties and fifties who have real money. Uh, not that people in their 30s don't, it's just, you know, there's a, a portion where you just can't time the market and it's going to get ugly. Um, but that's kind of why my strategy sells on the way up. So at some point you have some cash and uh, the key is, you know, um, you know, buying the dips is not something my strategy is supposed to be doing. So now that we fall in, let's go to the NASDAQ 100, Ivan, because S&P doesn't mean anything right now to me. So I think what's important here in the NASDAQ 100, somehow it has held the 2018 lows. And I don't think it's possible that it will hold. But if it does hold, uh, that'd be great. So I'm, I'm planning to stay away from tech until it gets washed out. Like Apple broke down on Friday. I think that can see 180. If we go to Apple, unless it bounces tomorrow, I mean, I don't see how that stays. If we go to a daily... If it doesn't stop right here on Monday, you know, in this 220 area, uh, I can't see why, I don't see any support. You know, it could quickly disintegrate like it did in December 2000. If we go now to the weekly, if it doesn't hold that 220 area, um, and I've been selling Apple on the stream to raise cash to do other things, you know, in the 270, 280 area. So, so Apple's still my biggest position, but I, I just, it could drop into that 160, 170 area very quickly uh, and a crash. So I'm staying away from tech. So it's kind of what you said, Ivan, about some stocks are bottoming or you know less new lows. So now I'm starting to think of stocks as venture capital, meaning I'm starting to think about, okay, what are the 10 companies that I can buy down 50 or 60% uh, 
that could go up to 300% over the next 10 years. Uh, maybe not quite venture capital returns, but uh, you know, if they're down 60%, what are some bulletproof companies that should work? So the way I'm thinking about it first is from a very high level, um, the reason software is working the best and tech is working the best is because if we go back to the QQQ, it's not people centric. So if you look at 90% of the companies you know, that are in healthcare and, and biotech, this whole index is very unpeople centric, meaning uh, every CEO can cut 20 to 30% of their workforce. They're not losing 100% of their sales, unlike restaurants and, and retail and energy, right, where they're leveraged to the hilt. So a tech company can just say, in freeze hiring, we're going to cut 20 to 30% of the fat. They're not losing 100% of their revenue, and that's why they're not following as fast. And that's why, you know, um, they've held up the best. So I'm, I'm like I said, if, if this gets much worse than the NASDAQ, I'll look at some tech stocks. You know, I, wanna, I don't want to buy Zoom in an all-time high uh, in a bear market because as soon as I think the market calms down, money will pull out of Zoom and go into other tech stocks. Same with groceries. I think as soon as the market calms down, money will come out of Clorox and the grocers and go into tech stocks. So I don't want to like do the opposite. So what I'm looking for and I've been right and wrong so far because I'm just trading, or is software companies. I just want to buy them at lower prices. So the next thing I'm looking for, and, and the areas that you have to avoid are leverage, right? Because we're not smart enough as investors. So if we go and look at like, Bo people are trading Boeing and people are trading, you know, highly levered companies and just, you're going to miss the forest for the trees, right? Because you, if the company is highly leveraged, you're in the hands of the government, not in the hands of signals. Okay, so take those off your screen. Uh, the poster child for whether this works is going to be Tesla. Okay, so Tesla had a chance. This is a stock, you know, that I, I started buying for my kids uh, last week um, as like a true venture capital stock, meaning I wish the idiot had raised more money in the offering, you know, a month ago. Instead, he raised two billion. He could have raised ten. So, you know, I don't trust, he is the wild card. As great as Tesla is, it's like kind of like Trump in the sense that obviously he's a smart guy, but he's doing things that I don't understand and seem to be always putting, you know, maybe it's good for the brand long-term, but like financially, when you can raise 10 and only raise two, uh, you know, that scares me, you know? And so that's why I think why the stock's getting hammered. Now, if they survive this, and you are going to be sorry that you didn't add Tesla into this. So I think they're the poster boil, poster company for the, the next bull run if they don't blow up right here. So as a venture, uh, as a as a venture thing, I think they're at the top of my list because um, uh, the trends in, in the market. But again, the most riskiest, I think, of the venture type of, type of stock you buy here. Uh, the number, and then obviously stay away from leverage. The companies I'm looking at that I believe the big will get bigger, meaning if I had to look at the restaurant stocks, this is the perfect time, and I'll pull up McDonald's as an example. Yep. Now, in what their advantage is, is first of all, you can go there today and go to a drive through okay? Um, and they have already figured out how to stay. I think only 50 stores are closed. Okay, so you can see why it already bounced. Uh, people came to their senses last week. And this is an example, Ivan, of a stock that didn't hit new lows as the market hit new lows. Not saying it won't, but now that people are willing to step in to McDonald's. That's the first thing we saw, okay, in this panic. I'm excited if we go back to a weekly again, in that no matter when this ends, and it will end, okay? Um, McDonald's is one of those companies that's gonna take market share from the local burger, you know, burgers were a hot trend, uh, you know, healthy food was a hot trend, but McDonald's is gonna crush the corner stores for the next three years because either stores go out of business or they've got to restart under new management. And um, they have, it, why would you start a new restaurant knowing that the virus can now come back every year, a different strain of virus? So, so I look at McDonald's and I go, that's venture capital, meaning now I'm going to treat McDonald's every 10% down as, as a buying opportunity. And if I'm going to 
if I was ever going to allocate to stocks as venture capital, I want to pick the best brands. And so that's one. Uh, and, you know, if that can drop to, you know, $120, $100, you just pick a price, pick a dollar amount that you're willing to, to lose to go to zero. And if it's two grand or three grand, you could you can now buy McDonald's at a massive discount. And know that when this turns, McDonald's is going to be one of the first companies to be the benefactor benefactor starbucks would be another one even though i'm not a starbucks fan um ivan that uh it's not on my 8 to 80 list they are going to be such a huge beneficiary of this crash because the corner coffee store uh while people will still want to support it so many will have to get shut down um so i feel that Starbucks is one of those now venture capitalists. I think if you wanted a venture capital on China, LK would even be like a derivative venture capital uh, a food play, meaning it's Starbucks of China. It's back to its IPO price, uh, probably be a little more volatile than Starbucks. But again, same thing uh, to, to the optimists. These are the ones that are going to gain market share. Same thing with Nike and Lulu. Uh, as much as they don't have tremendous upside, uh, like a startup retailer would, you know, buying Nike uh, down 50% has historically been an incredible thing to do if we go back. And so this is a stock that, yes, now you can start treating it like venture capital. Don't think about it as like, I'm going to be, you're going to catch the bottom. Think about it as like, I'm willing to put five to 10 grand in Nike. So start tomorrow with half. And then if it drops another 25%, another half, and then just leave it alone, put it in another screen, like with Starbucks and McDonald's. And then finally, Lulu, which obviously started to bottom. If, it, if, if stores stay closed and it's going to get worse, but zero debt, it's going to be a brand for the next 30 years. And so you want this to come down to 80 or 70, but you can start at 140, 150, as I did last week and say, listen, you know, either trade it, but also put away five or 10 grand, whatever it is that you're comfortable and treat it now like venture. Meaning, yes, it could go to zero if the world comes apart. You have to start thinking about crazy things when no signals are working. But at the same time, you can put a certain amount away going, I'm buying this at like three year discount to what this stock has done. Uh, and then finally, um, obviously, if this NASDAQ keeps dropping, I think Apple and Amazon become the two that I, I think are the most bulletproof. Um, but I want to see tech go lower before I add Apple and Amazon because I already own them. And then finally, if you want to take some real gambles in retail, you can take a look at Restoration Hardware, which has debt, is a luxury brand, um, is truly could go out of business if this goes longer because it's high-end furniture and it's a luxury brand, so, so rich people don't have to spend money right now. But this is a company that Warren Buffett was buying two months ago at $240. So people are gonna step into this at some point, but this literally could go to zero. If it doesn't go to zero, they are gonna come out of this so much stronger than any other furniture business or any other brand because they have the retail distribution, they have to figure out the supply chain. And if people don't wanna buy houses, they're going to upgrade their furniture. And at 0%, 1% interest rates, um, if people stop buying new homes, they're still going to upgrade their homes. So, so I like restoration hardware. I've been wrong for the last 40 points. Uh, you know, my average now is about 110. Uh, but that could be a zero. But that's one that easily could be three, $400 in the next bull run. So I treat that as venture capital. And then finally, I'm looking at Visa and MasterCard, um, if you want to bet on the consumer, uh, you know, as these continue to plunge, again, you get to buy brands 30 to 50% off that have a piece, they're kind of like the railroads of fintech. So Visa and MasterCards are, are, are ones that, from my 8 to 80 list, that you can, that you can buy. Uh, and I would say the same thing about Google. You know, they're getting hit because a lot of their search traffic is travel, maybe 20% of their search traffic. People are wondering why Google's going down. Well, they're tied to travel. I use Google for my travel. But again, 800, 700, uh, you treat Google as venture capital for the next three, four years. Uh, and um, 
you know, pick a number that you think can, you can lose 30 to 50% on, but have two to 300% upside. So the odds are starting to get more in favor of long-term and for long-term investors in great brands. And then if you really wanted to take a risk, I'm looking at, you know, people are talking about these, uh, at and and Verizon, but look at, if I look at Exxon, which has no debt, if you don't believe, if you think oil is going to get back above 30 any time in the next 10 years or five years, this is a company with no debt. I think the yield is crazy now. I think 10% or something like this. Uh, let's see. And people are like excited about at and and Verizon, which have debt up the yin yang. When I look at Exxon, it has no debt. So I'm saying if you're going to, it's the weirdest portfolio that I'm now considering Exxon as venture capital. Because yes, it could go to zero. I don't know in what world it goes to zero, um, because they have no debt. I'm like I, I'm just this to me is now my most exciting venture capital idea. Meaning I'm buying Exxon at like I don't know ten times earnings with the ten percent yield and no debt. I don't know why people are messing around with Boeing. So so again, if I'm going to put ten grand and risk it on oil, I'm going to put it on Exxon. So, so that's one that I'm looking at this week, but, and then I'd put it away. So it's like a venture capital is upside down right now in the sense that I can buy Exxon as a venture capital stock, meaning earn six to 10% of my money, assuming they continue to pay the dividend. They may even shut their dividend down, but they, they don't have debt. You know what I mean? Like that may be, so I'm looking to see when that finally starts to bounce, but I'm going to start adding that as a, as a position in my portfolio. And it goes against most things that I say, but again, I'm looking at stocks as venture capital right here. Um, and I think the next shoe to drop will be on my industry venture capital, because if we are bottoming here, the returns in the stock market for the next 10 years will be hard to beat. Um, again, I don't know if that'll happen, but I'm saying it's stocks will start having good returns out 10 years after a 30 to 50% drop historically. So uh, hopefully that helps. Does that help at all, Ivan, under, explain things? Uh, yeah, for, for some people who have a really, really long-term perspective. Yeah. But then, you rarely get these, these looks at these companies, is all I'm saying. Mind, it has been only a month in this. In yeah, but the, but the percentages are the percentages. Exactly. Like, I think we go lower, but again, and it could, we could go lower for three years. But again, some of these brands will bottom before the market bottoms. You know, some of yes. these brands will bottom. Many companies will drop 50 to 90% or more. And uh, many companies at some point will get priced for bankruptcy. And the ones who actually survive are the ones who, who go up 20 to 100 times in the next. And you're seeing, but what I'm trying to explain to people, the people-centric business, McDonald's, restaurants, Exxon, uh, Lulu, that have high operational leverage are, 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 the, are, are really scary right now because they have leverage, right? It's hard to just onboard 10,000 people and, and, uh, and lay off 10,000 people. Whereas a software company, it's, it's a click of a button and there's so much talent and uh, offshoring, et cetera, that you can bring people on slowly. So the hardest businesses that will be very volatile are these very people-centric businesses. But what I'm looking for it right now is I'm treating people-centric businesses as venture capital. So the Exxon's restoration hardware, Nike, Lulu, there's going to be negative stories for years now because of the virus. But at the same time, these brands historically should get stronger as their corner stores, et cetera, drop off. Now, Amazon gets stronger as well because e-commerce, they go from 9% of e-commerce, the chances of them getting to 20% of e-commerce just tripled because of, you know, all these smaller companies not being able to continue to operate. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Um, and one last thing I just wanted to mention. So the biggest challenge of a bear market is, is pessimism and, and multiple contraction. So even if some, if some companies continue to grow, uh, their price can still decline because of uh, P multiples contraction. And Shopify is one good example because if, if you are familiar with their story, um, their founder, I listened to an interview with their founder, and he said that in 2008, when supposedly the, it was still a private company and the world was supposedly going to end, they saw a big uptick in new clients as people who were laid off started opening their own Shopify store and started opening their own businesses. So, but 
despite of that, he had issues uh, finding uh, financing. Mm -hmm. And I think something similar might happen right now. Some companies will, we might see an uptick in their business yeah. and might see an improvement in their earnings, but just because, but since the valuation is so high. But Shopify is a great example, Ivan. So if we look at the weekly, meaning I own some Shopify, you know, I, I, I sold along the way up, but it doesn't interest me to buy until it, because as a platform, I think they'll be great, but I'm looking to buy when it's, you know, in the 160, 140, I, I think it's going to, I think, like you said, around financing, so many of their customers will churn that, you know, as a platform, they, again, this is why the NASDAQ, like the big leaders, I'm, I'm waiting, even though they're the strongest stocks, I'm waiting because they're going to have churn in a different way, meaning they're going to win long term, but short term because they've been financing and doing all these things. If we look at Square, same thing. What did we find out about Square in this correction? They're not Visa and MasterCard, right? They're a lender, right? They're a lender to small businesses. So all these people that thought Square Cash, yada, yada, yada. Um, the reason I avoided it is because they're the low margin lending business to businesses are going to be going, they're going to have to take money from the government because of their lending arm. So you can see what happened to Square versus a Visa and MasterCard. And if you look at PayPal, same thing, great company, they own Venmo, but they're not, in tr they're not making money off like Visa and MasterCard on, you know, they're more of a platform. So will PayPal uh, come back? Sure. But I, I really want to see PayPal wash out before I get excited, meaning 50 to 60%. So, you know, at 60 or 50, I get excited about PayPal. I'd rather own Visa and MasterCard rather on the railroads over PayPal and these type of corrections. So I think they'll bottom before, um, I think they'll bottom because of their business model and the way they run their business as, as railroads faster. So hopefully that helps. All right, see you next week, guys. All right, everybody.